Alrighty, part five. To my dismay, I'm still gonna be working on this engine, uh, replacing that flywheel. But uh, like I said, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, start doing some of the other things that I need to do anyways. So just make the engine the very, very last thing to go in. But what I have been working on is, as you know, I had a lot of trouble getting just a couple of these tires off and uh, it had to do with these hubs, okay? These hubs fit perfectly in the uh, metal rim. <laughs> That's what you want to call that. But uh, a couple of them got really stuck when, you know, either this part gets a little deformed or some rust gets in there, what have you, and causes those tires to really kind of jam up on there. So I went ahead and ground that down. So now, as you can see, slips in there beautifully and of course you lube it up so I went ahead and did that with all of them so now all of them fit in all of their respective tires snug as a bug but uh, with no chance of them getting stuck again so all right I'm gonna go ahead and get the chains that I have soaking over there or actually drip drying now um, from oil and uh, let's get those chains mounted all right let's get these chains in there all right so we got the chains mounted As you can see in there now there's a couple of adjustments for these chains uh, the rear chains the front chains as well as these um, transmission chains you can see how loose these are so I'll show you real quick on the adjustments that are available for these things so with these the back ones it uses a slider right so as you pull this pull this slider up it uh, tightens the chain as you can see right and it rides on that uh, nylon pad right here and when those wear out or the chains get too stretched then you replace the chains or replace the sliders. So that's how you do the back. The fronts. Uh, let's see here. The fronts are these guys right here. It's a sprocket that basically slides up and down. And when you push it down and tighten it down, um, it tightens the chains up. As long as these chains aren't drooping on the bottom, rubbing on the bottom of the plastic, you know, you can see right there lifts them up now to tighten these guys um, this whole engine mount and transmission mount you see these adjustment screws in the front or bolts in the front right here so you got to loosen up the uh, bolts to these middle axles um, there is also Right up underneath here. I don't know if you can see that. Let me see here. Uh, so right here, there's these two bolts, one, two next to each other. There's two. Uh, let's see if you can see those or not. Right there. There's another one. There's two of them. And then there's those two. You loosen all those up, and once the uh, once the engine pedestal and the transmission pedestal is loosened up from the frame itself, then you're going to take these bolts and you're going to turn them in to push it back, essentially, pushing the whole transmission and engine back on the frame, just enough to tighten these up. And you can get your good tension on those. So again, they don't have to be like crazy tight. You'll want about one fourth. You'll want about one fourth of an inch deflection you know, or looseness, I guess you can say, one fourth of an inch to go back and forth. And that's how you know that the chains are nice and tight. So right now I'm gonna leave them loose, you know, uh, until I can uh, make some other adjustments and, and get the, uh, the transmission and, and uh, engine pedestal loosened up to at least tighten these up before I tighten the, uh, the drive chains up, so. And, uh, that's how you uh, that's how you work the chains. All right. 
Alrighty, now that uh, we got the chains in it and uh, got the correct amount of tension on these, you can see how the uh, tensioners work. All right. All right, now I can um, go ahead and tighten down all of the collars, put the bolts back in, tighten down these uh, locking collars on the outside, and put the uh, tires back on it and make it a rolling chassis at this point. All right, so let's get that done. All right, <clears throat> so now, now that we have the hubs back on, show you something here so you got these lock collars got those little allen wrenches <clears throat> or allen screws on all of the all of the uh, pillow bearings right there that uh, lock the axle to them keep them from sliding out as well as these lock collars here Locked down, and they have an Allen wrench screw on them as well. Now that those are all locked in, the axles cannot come out. And uh, locked all the hubs down. Chains are good. Axles are securely in place. All the axle bolts are now properly tightened. We can go ahead and uh, put the tires back on. Uh, make it a rolling chassis so there's a couple of tires that uh, lose their air after about three days I pumped them up and it, it was about three days later that they went you know low on air so you can't do a flat repair on these you can't plug these tires they're all like integrated there's no changing the tires out because this rim is an integral part of the rubber tire itself so essentially they're throwaways now you can find them on ebay i want to say for about 50 to 70 bucks a tire they're in pretty good shape but uh with these i'm going to use some uh some really good um tire goo that uh, whatever tiny little you know slow leak that one of these might have will seal up with that stuff so be good to go uh later on if somebody wants to you know basically uh get the adapters for the hubs or simply make new hubs so that they can uh, actually put the Argo type five lugs on them. That would be better because then you would have a, a better variety of tires that you can put on these things. So, all right, let's keep on moving forward. Well, I got the tires and rims on. You can see, pretty simple, three lug design. They're all fitted on there. Looking good so far. Yeah. I also went ahead and fitted the covers back on and just test fitted everything. It's looking really good now. It's looking like a buggy again. Yeah. Can't wait to get this engine going. I'm ordering the parts for it tonight. So. That thing's going to be just badass. That is going to be a screaming little buggy with this snowmobile engine, in it, this two-stroke. Hopefully when I get that sucker running. But, uh, yeah. Yeah, that's coming along nicely. Something to look forward to. All right, so uh, I got the uh, new part in, a uh, new stator flywheel here. Uh, it's a used one, but in good to excellent shape as far as the cam and stuff goes. It's still very serviceable. Uh, everything works on it. It's got the C-clip. Um, everything that uh, that I needed. So, yeah, we're going to be uh, putting this uh, flywheel 
keyway face plate, whatever you call it, back onto the stator plate to mount on there to get the timing right. So on the old one I showed you before, um, right in there as you can see, it's pretty badly, it's obviously cracked, deformed, it's, you know, it wasn't worth fixing. Uh, the other thing that I found out once I pulled this plate off, those three holes right there, um, again, they hold this setup, which is the, um, the pulley and the pull start, uh, um, engaging lug, whatever that's called. But anyways, um, those three holes, once I got that off, I noticed that, um, look at how badly it chewed into that. Somebody used too long of screws or use the screws without putting that on there because that does take obviously some thickness. So I got some new uh, new screws for it, but when I got the plate off, you could see not only is that one uh, that one cracked and busted all the way through, but it warped that plate pretty good. You can see. So, yep, it just it wasn't worth uh, dickering around with this and coming up with a new C-clip and fixing that hole and welding and doing all this crap because it's just, it's trashed. So 80 bucks on eBay. Uh, if I wanted to buy a new one, it would have been like 120 bucks. But, you know, I found the exact um, part number that uh, this one was coming off. So this thing only fits on one way. These four holes. Uh, come on, get on there. Let's see here. So... These four holes, where is it? There we go. So, you notice I got three of them here to line up. And, oh, there you go. So, this is the only way that it lines up all four holes. Now, if I were to spin it and go to the next hole, you can see that one lines up, that one lines up. Not quite, not quite. So, this thing actually can only go on the one way. And, uh, Obviously, there's there's a reason for that as well. Um, you got your keyway, you got your advance right here on this side that advances your your timing, right? And uh, that all has to correspond. You got right there that will match up with the timing marks when it's on, right? And uh, so this way you can check it with like a timing light or something while it's running, and uh, to adjust it, um, you got this screw here, so this whole plate will. You can rotate this plate um, to where um, it'll open and close on the cam as it spins around. Top dead center, the keyway pretty much upwards right now. So that's where I'm at. Um, I also got these uh, these nice little uh, clips for the for the cover so that when I put this back on, you can see those spots right there. So let's see here. With one hand. Nope, can't do it. Anywho. You can see right here how those clips are going to go on and hold that in place. So these were like eight bucks on eBay again. I got new bolts for it. So I went ahead and bought a whole bunch of new bolts. All the threading is the same and stuff. So pretty cool. Uh, I'm going to rig up a timing light, a uh, little nine volt battery with a little car with a little car light bulb. Uh, so when the light's on or off, it'll tell me if it's. Uh, you know, incorrect timing when the spark plug is on the number one and matching up with the timing light and get this thing dialed in. So that's what I'm going to be doing. <laughs> All right. Awesome sauce. Part six is on the way. We're uh, going to get this engine uh, worked and go back in the buggy. All right, guys, stick with it. Thanks.